Good morning, everybody. Neil, thank you for the introduction, and thank you to the organizers of, of this conference for the opportunity to present. For those of you who have been following Therabiologics, what you'll hear today is an update on the progress. And for those of you who are less familiar, what you're going to hear about is a really cool application of stem cells. And this will reinforce the breadth of the promising medical applications that this field is working on pioneering. Their biologics, rather than to pursue regenerative medicine applications, is using a particular type of stem cell to deliver potent therapeutics to the site of disease to fight cancer. Founded in 2011, the company's underlying technology platform dates back to a decade plus ago when founder Dr. Karen Abudi and her colleagues at Harvard and elsewhere discovered the special properties of neural stem cells and their inherent tendency to home to the site of cancer cells and penetrate cancerous tissue. Based on this work and the resulting body of intellectual property, which has matured into three issued patents, uh, to which uh, their biologics has exclusive worldwide license, uh, they've continued to advance this work as Karen moved on from Harvard, went to City of Hope, where she is a professor and has access to their wealth of resources and capabilities to help advance cutting-edge uh, research and experimental therapy treatments. And that includes access to CGMP manufacturing capabilities, the ability to file INDs and conduct clinical trials. And this work has been supported through uh, almost $30 million in grants and gifts to date for advancing up to four different product candidates. And the first product candidate achieved a major milestone early this year with the City of Hope uh, successfully completing a safety and feasibility study in glioma patients uh, during which they were able to generate some proof of concept data that we'll show you shortly that supports the continued development of this lead product can candidate as well as the uh, initiation of clinical trials in 2014 as well for two other product candidates of their biologics. Few in number, but strong in expertise in cell and gene therapy, both on the technical and business side. Uh, the core team is comprised of Dr. Abudi, her colleague at City of Hope, uh, Dr. Alexander Anila, and more recently, as I became familiar with the company, I jumped in there with them as well. We are advised by a large group of experts that are associated with City of Hope, with CIRM, with the Adult Brain Tumor Consortium and other places who are all helping us to advance this pipeline of product candidates. The three lead product candidates, or out of the three lead product candidates, two of them are enzymatic pro-drug strategies, and one of them is for the delivery of a conditionally replicating oncolytic virus. The Focus initially has been on the treatment of brain cancer, re reflecting Karen's background in working in brain tumor labs. We will generate data to identify specifically uh, which of these products function uh, best in which subsets of patients uh, in, with brain cancer, and also potentially in combination with each other, which I'll touch upon a little bit later on. And also, we will advance the and expand the applications into cancers outside of the brain, as you'll hear about shortly. So in recognition of the conference organizers' uh, work to support the field of stem cell regenerative medicine, we're going to highlight today in particular our TBX02 product program, which is the recipient of a fairly significant grant from CIRM that has allowed us to advance this product candidate through the preclinical development stages and poise it for going into the clinic in 2014. Okay, so why do these NSCs, the neural stem cells, localize at the site of cancer and actually migrate uh, and hunt them down? And it's well documented. They are attracted to the tumor microenvironment, the hypoxia, the neovascularization, the various cytokines and growth factors that are thrown off by cancer cells and the other cells in that environment. In addition, in in vitro studies, it's been shown that uh, the more aggressive and invasive the cancer cell line, the more uh, 
attracted to those cell lines, the NSCs are, and will hunt them down and penetrate. So with that ability to migrate and migrate over considerable distances, this actually opens up the possibility for us to administer the product candidates via multiple routes, as shown here, starting first, once again, with the work being, having originated in a brain tumor lab, looking at intracranial administration to treat primary tumor. And the important thing here is whether you inject the NSCs at the site of biopsy or resection or in the opposite hemisphere, it's been shown that these NSCs will migrate to where the cancer is located. Similarly, use an intracranial uh, injection to uh, treat metastatic disease in the brain. And also, uh, very impressively, being able to administer the NSCs by IV with the NSCs having the capability to cross the blood-brain barrier to treat tumors in the brain. And of course, if you can do that, then uh, more recent studies have shown that you can also administer the NSCs IV to treat metastatic cancer elsewhere in the body. So a lot of different applications here. Okay, very quickly, the underlying uh, platform, which is also a product candidate. So uh, the uh, cell line we used was derived from 15-week-old telencephalon. It was vMIC immortalized. That means we, as you know, we can culture it uh, in the appropriate conditioned media. But when you transplant that into humans, it will cease dividing after 48 hours, and then a matter of weeks also disappear altogether. This cell line was then uh, stably transduced to express the, the, or to have the gene cytosine deaminase and express the uh, resulting enzyme. And this serves as both a product candidate, because as many of you are uh, very familiar with, the ability of cytosine deaminase to convert the prodrug 5FC into the active cancer drug 5FU. But also, uh, as I mentioned, these cells do not divide once they are transplanted into the human. But if you had a bad, bad actor that decided to do that, you could simply uh, administer 5-FC and, and uh, eliminate those cells that are dividing, continue to divide. So importantly, this is the platform. It's a product candidate. It is a platform that can be modified to uh, deliver other therapeutic agents. We'll talk about this. And it has all the advantages of allogeneic versus autologous approaches being more cost effective, off the shelf type product, and being well characterized. And importantly, the one concern or key concern with allogeneic approaches would be immunogenicity. These have been selected as MHC class two negative with minimal MHC class one expression to minimize that possibility. So let's look at uh, TBX01 as a product candidate. And uh, the first question is, well, why don't you just simply administer 5-FU as a drug itself to treat brain cancer patients? Well, the issue is that uh, 5-FU doesn't cross the blood-brain barrier uh, very well. So that's not an effective way to go. And if you do try to administer directly in the brain, either as the pure drug itself or through uh, enzymatic prodrug strategy using a gene, typical gene therapy approach, what you are missing is an active means to localize and concentrate the drug at the site of the disease in order to get sufficient therapeutic benefit. So our solution is to create TBX01, so the NSC engineered to express cytosine deaminase. Uh, the NSC uh, is uh, injected into the patient and will actively migrate to uh, where the tumor cells are located. The patient can orally ingest the prodrug 5-FC, unlike the uh, actual chemotherapeutic uh, drug 5-FU, because 5-FC will cross the blood-brain barrier. And once that occurs, uh, the 5-FC will uh, enter into the cell through diffusion. It will encounter the cytosine deaminase enzyme, be converted into the prodrug 5-FU, and then go on to uh, uh, diffuse out of the cell and kill the nearby cancerous cells. So once again, this was a uh, study that was conducted by City of Hope, completed earlier this year. And this is an example of data generated from that study. Uh, there's a lot more data that's available, but the thing about this patient number five was that uh, this microdialysis catheter that was used to take samples of fluid from the brain to be able to measure the presence of 5-FC and conversion of 5-FU 
uh, isn't very stable. A lot of patients lose them after a few days. But in this patient, they actually uh, had it in place for seven or so days. And what you see here is uh, up here, this is the oral administration uh, of the uh, 5-FC. You see it in the blood plasma. Um, you see it getting effectively into the brain itself as measured from uh, the samples taken from the microdialysis catheter. And you see it being converted into 5-FU in the brain. What you don't see is the 5-FU present in the plasma outside the brain. So this is nice proof of concept of the enzymatic prodrug strategy working and getting conversion of the prodrug into the active agent. The question is, is this at a therapeutic level? And this probably falls short of that. Uh, and our strategy for addressing that is to do uh, additional studies where we're going to increase the number of NSCs that are administered, uh, as well as 5-FC. So those studies are planned with multiple rounds of treatment. So the upshot here for the study, proof of concept with the uh, conversion of the prodrug into active drug, we demonstrated safety of the cells. Uh, with this one-time administration, at least, we did not observe any immunogenicity. Uh, in a couple of brain autopsies, there was no evidence of secondary tumors, and we did uh, identify the cells had migrated away from the site of uh, injection. And this was also verified through some imaging work, which is another first in human for uh, Karen and her group and the City of Hope in being able to label these cells and be able to track their migration uh, after they've been administered to humans. Next step is to go into a multi-dose dose escalation study for this product candidate. And in the future, again, there are many possibilities to explore here. Uh, uh, Five-fluorouracil is a known radiosensitizer, so possible use in combination with radiation or in combination with another prodrug, which I will talk about right now, which is SN38. So SN38 uh, is the... Um, active metabolite of its prodrug, irinotecan, which, as I'm sure many of you know, is an improved, widely used cancer agent. And uh, when it's converted into the active metabolite of SN38, you're talking about a 3,000-fold or so potency increase. If you compare that to even 5-FU, you also see uh, that SN38 has a greater potency. And what that translates to with an IC50 is that to get a therapeutic benefit uh, with 5-FU, you're looking at more of a micromolar concentration that needs to be achieved versus a nanomolar uh, concentration with SN38. So again, a very potent uh, uh, strategy here. So why not use SN38 directly? Well, as mentioned, uh, SN38 is the active meta metabolite of the widely used irinotecan uh, cancer drug. Uh, irinotecan becomes converted naturally in the gut, which produces carboxyl esterase um, uh, to cause the creation of SN38. And it's important to note that the rate dose, limiting, dose limiting toxicity for irinotecan is actually the production of SN38. Uh, which is toxic and causes side effects. The other aspect is that uh, in addition to it being too toxic to be able to directly administer, it also has water insolubility uh, uh, challenges. Okay, so what's our solution? Well, our solution is to take TBX01, so this is the CD-modified uh, NSC, and then we further modify this through uh, uh, transfecting it with an adenovector that contains the gene for carboxyl esterase, so CE. And when that's administered, again, the NSC will home in to where the tumor cells are located. It will, uh, the CE is producing the e endoplasmic reticul reticulum, which means that it's secreted out into the general uh, vicinity outside the cell, which gives it further reach, so to speak, uh, in once it encounters the IV-administered uh, irinotecan and gets converted into SN38, and you get the resulting tumor killing. Uh, this work has been the subject of a significant grant from CIRM, and we are planning to enter into a clinical study. It's first for this product candidate in 2014. 
very quickly, here's some data supporting uh, the, uh, this approach. And what you see here are, this is a glioma, uh, brain cancer model. So you see the mice that are controls dying at about day 50. You see the mice that are treated with irinotecan dying shortly thereafter. But here's the results of uh, the administration of the uh, NSCs and their ability to convert the irinotecan into SN38 and prolong survival as a result. Uh, here's another look, and this time to distinguish between the other uh, approach, which was treating a primary uh, tumor in the brain. Uh, this one is IV administration in a metastatic tumor model. And uh, again, what you see here is a very pronounced, prolonged uh, survival of the NSC combination with irinotecan compared to irinotecan alone and certainly compared to the control. Okay, uh, very quickly. So uh, we have a third product candidate, and this one is not a enzymatic prodrug approach. In this case, we're delivering a conditionally replicating adenovirus that's selective for cancer cells. Uh, people have tried this and are trying this still uh, with limited success. Um, because the uh, progression of uh, the oncolytic virus to reach disseminated cancers elsewhere in the body is hindered by their inability to uh, cross through normal tissue. So they only replicate in, normal, in cancerous tissue and not in normal tissue. So our solution is to use TBX01 to uh, transfect it with the CRAD surviving uh, PK7, which is selective for replicating in glioma cells. What happens is you administer TBX03, it homes into where the cancer cells are. The uh, virus replicates in the NSC, it bursts the NSC, the virus then will infect the neighboring um, cancer, cancerous cells. They in turn will uh, have replication go on of the conditionally replicating adenovirus, which will then infect the other surrounding cancer cells and basically amplify the therapeutic effect. And that also is in the process of looking at starting uh, phase one in 2014. So what you've heard about is a broadly applicable platform for delivering potentially multiple existing and future therapeutic agents multiple indications we can pursue going outside of brain cancer, ultimately into treating uh, metastatic cancer outside the brain, and going from intratumoral administration to more user-friendly approaches like IV administration. Substantial body of intellectual property and proprietary uh, materials and new filings, et cetera. And with our lead advantage, we think that we get, that gives us a pretty good um, advance on any others that may decide to join the field. And the upshot here is that their biologics represents a unusually advanced pre-Series A uh, biopharma company. Uh, we've talked plenty about the platform with the POC uh, in our hands and with the additional product candidates and existing one going into clinical studies in 2014. We think there's a good chance that we can be poised for achieving an exit within the next three to five years, either through an IPO or through an acquisition. Thank you for your attention.